Good afternoon, everyone. Dave here, live from the shed. I want to bring you uh, an update on Pat King. Uh, you may have seen earlier today, I released a video. You can go back and watch that when you get a chance. Uh, calling for Canadians and indeed people around the world to write letters of support to Pat King. The address for Pat is in the description on this video and in the description on the video I shared out as well. Uh, our Prime Minister, as you can imagine, wants nothing more than to silence Pat. He's been in prison for over 100 days now, and uh, our government does not want him to have the ability to speak out, to share his story when he finally is released. He's nothing more than a political prisoner at this point. His crime is being a successful spokesperson for helping to encourage uh, thousands of Canadians to come together to stand for freedom in Ottawa. And uh, I'm encouraging people to write a letter to him that uh, I want that prison to be flooded with letters of support for him. He needs to be encouraged at this time. As you can imagine, over 100 days in prison takes a toll on someone, uh, especially someone who is not guilty of anything. And uh, I want Canadians and all those who support this cause to send him letters of encouragement, encourage him to not give in to a gag order, encourage him to uh, not be silenced, uh, and encourage him to hold out so he can be a spokesperson uh, for this movement once again when he is released. And I have a number of people asking about Freedom George as well. I'd love to be able to give more information about uh, Freedom George, but uh, I do not have that information at this time, and I only want to communicate things that um, I am I'm confident on and have direct knowledge of. And But if I receive more information about him, I know he's still in jail. He's been moved to a different jail, uh, but I don't have that contact information at, at this time. If someone can reach out to me and get me in touch, I would love to uh, encourage him as well. Because if Pat's crime is being a successful spokesperson, then uh, George's only crime is being friends with a successful spokesperson, which is even more ridiculous than, uh, than Pat's situation. And uh, today I have the great honor of being able to bring on uh, a pastor who has been working to connect with Pat for a long time now. She actually started reaching out to the prison like uh, at the very beginning of this, really, and uh, spent over two months trying to get on the visitors list. They were denying Pat even to have pastoral visits. She just wanted to go to encourage him and to give him that uh, moral and spiritual support while he was in prison, as has been a tradition of um, people in ministry for as, as long as uh, humans have been around, and uh, the prison making it very difficult uh, for her to do that. She was finally able to get in touch, but faced many difficulties, many canceled meetings, and uh, but was finally able to have some visits with him, and she's going to share with us uh, just how he's doing and how you guys can uh, encourage and support him as well. And if you don't already know uh, who I'm talking about is Melissa McKee of the Bikers Church. Uh, she's agreed to speak publicly, to um, have her name out there. And, uh, you know, when we were talking a bit about that, I said, well, Melissa, you, you and your church have already gotten death threats and uh, people trying to uh, accuse you of all sorts of things going all the way back to the convoy. So, it can't really get any worse, uh, can it? And so um, for the sake of, of Pat and for supporting him, she's willing to share publicly, and I really appreciate her willingness to, to do that. If you don't know uh, Melissa, her and her husband uh, run the Bikers Church in Ottawa, which came to fame, as it were, during the convoy, and uh, they simply continue to function as the church that they have always been, uh, welcoming people of all backgrounds, uh, no judgment. Everyone is always welcome to their church for food, for, for worship, for prayer and support. Uh, believers, non-believers, whatever walk of life they come from. Uh, her church community has always been a welcoming place and continued to be that during the Freedom Convoy, being a warming station, a place for people to get food. And then again, during the, the biker rally, during um, Rolling Thunder. And uh, my apologies again, Melissa, I actually... It, uh, it's my fault that uh, they got attached to all that because uh, when we were putting the flyer together, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to, it's a bikers rally. Let's put the bikers church on there as an option for people on Sunday if they'd like to stay 
and take part in a worship service. And that ended up getting blown out of proportion. And we had the mainstream media reporting on this official event from Rolling Thunder. And uh, there ended up being a hate crime committed at the church that Sunday morning. People came to the church and spray painted um, multiple taggings on the church and laid thumbtacks on their driveway. And um, and ultimately, <laughs> you, Melissa, you have uh, me to, to blame for, for drawing that attention uh, to your church uh, again. And they actually had no official part in it other than me sticking their name on the flyer, encouraging people to go there if they wanted to take part in a church because they have a history of doing a ministry to bikers, as you can imagine, for a church called the Bikers Church. And uh, for that, they ended up again being victims of a hate crime, not the first one that they've experienced. And so it's uh, a wonderful community. And Melissa has done a great job of just continuing to provide support to everyone who needs it, including Pat right now. So she's going to come on and tell us about her experiences of trying to get a visit with Pat and then uh, update on how he's doing. So let's go ahead and bring on uh, Melissa McKee. Good afternoon, Melissa. Hey, Dave. Hey, right, thanks so much for, for joining us and and for your willingness to to speak out. I know, you know, I, I, I joke about it a little, but it's been no joking matter of uh, the hate that you and your husband have received and your church community as a whole. You guys have received a lot of pushback through this whole experience going back into February. Yeah, we have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just thank you for putting our name on that poster, I guess because 700 people ended up coming to the church that weekend that Rolling Thunder was here. 700 people got to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not sorry. None of us are sorry. God has actually used all of those things for our good. Many media outlets were parked across the street from us and watched uh, pretty much like a big love fest. <laughs> happening. Lots of hugging. I hugged probably all 700 people that came in the door. I got a major sunburn that day. I wasn't expecting to be outside uh, for that long. But 700 people. And if you can imagine before we were running, like if we had 90 people in a service, 100, we were going crazy. It was like so busy. And now 700 people would consider coming to church. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and well, thank you. And thank you for just your ongoing, uh, just being a church. And I, I mean, I've said it before that uh, you, you didn't really change your style at all. You just continued reaching out to to everyone who needed it. And uh, so when when did you first start trying to, to reach out to Pat? Uh, okay, well, let me start at the beginning. I've, yep. I've done several Facebook posts. I actually to maybe two weeks ago now. And I, I really do. I hear the voice of God, not audibly, but I, I feel like an impression. And I know when he's speaking to me and I felt, felt like that Saturday morning, I was actually to release that I was a friend of Pat's now. And, you know, this Facebook post just kind of rolled out of me. I couldn't even stop it. So I got my phone out and I I just wrote it. And it's astounding to me that people would be shocked or taken back or disappointed even that I would become a friend of Pat King. Why wouldn't I? I don't, you know, isn't there this like saying um, amongst uh, Christianity, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Jesus would show grace and mercy, but he called people higher and he, he healed them so he could set them free. And uh, Pat, he, he's not a Christian. He never has professed being a follower of Christ, being a godly man. None of that. He's never opened himself up to that. And here he is stuck with this girl who just continues <laughs> to speak life over him, to believe the best in him, to call him higher. Uh, there's actually a video of Pat the day he got arrested. He did a video and I had been with him the night before and I challenged him to stop swearing so much in his videos. Because 
I would, I, maybe I'd like to watch his videos with my kids, but I wouldn't. And so I, I called him higher. I, I said, can you stop swearing so much? You're, you're leading the nation. And I'm going to ask you like to be a man of integrity and character and stop swearing so much. So the next day he did a video. Somebody actually sent it to me because he swore in it. And then he went, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, Melissa. And he apologized to me and somebody said, is this you? He's apologized. It's you, isn't it? That he's apologizing to. So, <laughs> you know, to back it up at the beginning, he, him and George ended up coming to the church one day for a bowl of soup and, you know, found themselves here. And of course, all the people were, you know, kind of falling all over him like they were everywhere, getting pictures and wanting, you know, wanting to chat with him. And we were just able to offer them a warm quiet safe place at, at one point i had asked the people to like you know just let them eat in peace and i ended up sitting with them for a little bit and chatting that was it i offered my phone number as i did literally to every person that was coming in the building because you never know what was going to happen what they would need if they needed anything you know we had teams running down to the hill bringing stuff bringing food if they needed um, medical treatment, we there was a you know this mom and her son that were just took it upon themselves to to treat the truckers, and I could text them and say go to this intersection, you know, like there was just all we were managing all kinds of logistics, and so I was taking people's phone numbers, and I offered my phone number. I didn't I didn't ask for his because I felt that was actually too forward, and he ended up calling me one night. Uh, there was. There was a woman stuck at the church. He had driven by. He thought we were still open. It was pretty late at night. And this woman who had come to our church service, was her ride was really late because it was a snowstorm. And he ended up calling me and saying, there's a woman on your front step. So I turned around and came back. It was 1130 at night. And uh, we ended up sitting in the church and chatting for quite some time. That was the night before he was arrested. And there had been two other times where him and George had come in. And I, I actually got an opportunity to pray for both of them. And that's what I'm here for. So I, I've been commissioned to preach the gospel. And that includes loving people that maybe some others find undesirable. And I, I, you know, I take my cues from Jesus and, you know, he ate with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes and the unlovely, the people that had leprosy. He wasn't afraid. And I kind of feel the same way. I'm going to go and whoever, I just keep saying, Lord, send me, send me. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm being sent to prison <laughs> to visit. So that's how I connected with Pat. And right away, I, I tried to uh I, I was calling the prison i was leaving messages i i went into the prison with money to put in his and george's accounts they wouldn't take it i couldn't just go visit pat had to add me as a visitor but then it took some time for me to be able to get through to him and then find you know i'd sent emails to the head of security and they took time getting back to me and there were there were just not really any a answers. lot of time from what i understand correct a lot of time, yeah, almost two months actually before he, like I got in to see him finally. Now that wasn't, it didn't take that long, but it, it took that long for me to be able to connect with him. He, 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 and I didn't know because I, I visited people in prison before and if they call you, you get a collect call. And he was calling mm. from calling cards. So it's a 1-800 number and I didn't recognize it. And finally one day I number kept calling calling so I answered and it's about time you take my call I was like oh my gosh I can't believe it's you I'm sorry. <laughs> so awful and that just began the process there and then it took more than three weeks for me to be approved uh, to yeah. be able to come into the prison and visit so that's how long it took and then I remember uh, while well, you were in this process of uh, you finally got approved to do visits and then you told me several times you went in to have a visit, you had a scheduled visit, and then they'd cancel it and they, they gave you droplet excuses. What was what was that about? Yeah, astounding again. Uh, one morning, is it scheduled uh, on a day of the week? It's always the same day for him, wherever, you know, they have to break up the, the schedule for the different rooms. And so I was scheduled to go one day, at, you know, in the afternoon and 
the the jail called me first thing in the morning and said your visit's been canceled today because of droplet concerns and i i said i said pardon he said there's droplet concerns and i said well i'm not concerned because i visit him through a half a foot of glass on a phone so i i don't i can't even access him so if it's like can we just do it anyways and they said no so i had a visit scheduled two days later which i showed up to and i'm always a little bit early and i sat there for 20 minutes by myself they have great acoustics in that room by the way because i like to sing in there <laughs> so i was in there singing away and there's no clock and i can't bring my phone so i have no idea how long but i had a couple of songs so it was a few minutes and the came in and said your visit's been canceled canceled i said i've been sitting here waiting for 50 minutes you didn't know before this oh i was so angry I, I'm, I i get to leave i get to go home i get to make myself food and sleep in my own bed and drive myself places and, and do what i want pat doesn't he gets two 20 minute visits a week you're canceling it for droplet concerns Again, this is, where is the science? Yeah. Yeah. And I think pretty clearly just excuses to, uh, to make this difficult. I don't know if they were trying to discourage you from doing it. Um, but yeah, like you said, you're, you're behind a half a foot of glass. You're in a separate room, you're on a telephone and they're telling you it's, it's for, for droplet concerns. Um, and obviously you weren't too concerned, but, uh, endlessly making excuses. I, I'm going to get you to, um, do you mind just, I'm going to remove you. And then if you could hop back on, you're just, uh, footage is a little glitchy. I just want to see if I can get a better feed. Um, so I'm just going to remove you and then I'll get you to hop back on again here. Um, the address for Pat King is uh, posted here on the top of the uh, comments there. It's also in the description. And uh, someone mentioned there uh, recommending not to send cash. Uh, concur with that. Uh, that's not the way um, the cash will just be uh, removed. I'm not exactly sure what would happen to it, but I uh, don't recommend sending cash, but the address is there to send your letters of support. No, am I back? Yep. Uh, we'll see if that works a little better for us. Just thought I'd reset it. Um, sure. and then you finally work. You can't What's send. That? You have to be on his visitors list in order to be able to bring, to bring cash. Right. You can't. Like you can't just, I tr cause I tried that actually. I tried to, you know, show up and just at least put money in their canteen cause canteen is how you survive in there. <laughs> it's how you, you even buy shampoo and conditioner and soap. Um, and so if you don't have any money, you've got to use the really stuff, you know, this crappy stuff on the wall that makes you itchy and like, it's not bad enough already. So, uh, you know, ours, they're, they're like money in there, chips, it's like money. So. No, they wouldn't let me put any money in his account unless I was like on his visitors list. So don't send right. cash. Don't put stickers on the paper. Uh, they they go through, the, they read everything. Uh, it's sometimes they'll photocopy the letter and give them a photocopy of the letter for security purposes. So just write a plain letter. I don't know, newspaper articles, pictures. I, I guess would be okay, but no cash, no stickers, no, nothing like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd like to hear just your thoughts on, on how he's doing after finally being able to, to visit him and talk with him, like where no doubt a very difficult emotional, uh, mental struggle there. Uh, can you update us a little bit on how he's doing? I, yes. I want to be very mindful that I'm honoring to him in the things that he's sharing, that I don't betray confidence. So I'm just going to be thoughtful about this. Uh, some days are harder than others, for sure. And this man is a stranger to me. I, I, I met him four times at the church when the convoy was here, in rooms full of people, everybody wanting his attention, you know, the persona turned on. And I... I I'm, you know, he just knows my, my name now, you know, we're, we're chatting a little bit and, and then he goes to jail and now I'm visiting for 20 minutes at a time twice a week. So 
a friendship, a relationship takes time for, you know, investment of time to get to know one another. So that's, that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get to know him and I'm not a fangirl. I'm not somebody there, you know, who's like all, what's it's packing. Uh, he's a man who has been unjustly imprisoned. And I, I feel very large measure of compassion for him and that going because I want to lift and I want to encourage and I want to stir to his heart uh, and you can you can love him you can hate him you cannot agree with things that he has said but what is happening to this man is it's setting a very dangerous precedent in this country mm. and I, I will be found supporting the person so some days are better than others. He sleeps okay, mostly not. For the first days that he was there, he was held in isolation. And he said that they didn't even let him shower. And he was maximum security after that. For mischief, innocent and guilty. Very, very to swallow this uh, when I go and I see him. He's exhausted sometimes because he's not sleeping because there are people there with mental health issues, with anger issues. You're in a room. Some days there are 30 people in it. Some days, you know, guys leave, new ones come. There's always this jostling for position. There's getting to know personalities. There's alpha male, you know, that whole thing. It's a real thing. So it's exhausting for him and it's exhausting to be there for this. And I think that he carries the weight of George very heavy. George being in prison, you said it well, the only thing George is guilty of is being his friend. And he carries that and he hasn't seen his children and he's missing major milestones in their lives. And think about what your life is like if you stepped out of it for four months, not, not having arranged your finances, not having arranged, you know, like your your kids, getting them squared away, preparing to be away for that long. Uh, you have animals, your car payment, your hydro, your mortgage. And his bank account is frozen. Still. So, so how is he able, is what's happening with yeah mortgage, insurance payments, what happens with all that stuff? No comment. Okay. But uh, yeah, not not a good, uh, not a good setup. And um, yeah, obviously things start to, to spiral very fast. I mean, even just with me being in Ottawa, and and obviously a free man, it uh, it was difficult enough keeping things in order uh, back home. And uh, all of us who were there, you know, faced that, and uh, some much worse than others. But yeah, nothing like having your your bank account frozen, not being able to to make those phone calls, get things in order, and. Um, yeah, it's absolutely terrible. And you, you said it very well of a, a dangerous precedent. And a, again, and I would concur of like whatever someone's personal feelings are about uh, things he, he said, it, it's um, to to create this kind of, to have a country where because we say things that, that me or anyone else, and especially the government doesn't like, or they can just lock you up without charge. I mean, at the end of all this, uh, he could be released with no charges, and yet he served a sentence, right? He he has been punished, deeply punished, uh, without being proven guilty of anything. And and uh, I, I've often thought, if we put a, a microphone in, in my face or your face or anyone's, if, if we had recordings of everything we've ever said in our lives, and uh, especially when uh, I was down in Ottawa listening to, you know, the truckers and various people, uh, rant and express their anger and if there had been a camera on those faces at those times uh what would the the world have thought of that and and so to those who just attack him and say oh you know he he shouldn't have said these things etc cetera, etc cetera. and um you know he is out he who is without sin throw the first stone and i think if we examine ourselves and the things we've said uh potentially are posted uh, at some point in our lives and if those were hung out for the world to see uh we might not be happy with that. And and so to create this precedent of because of things he said or posted, um, 
posting uh, things is not, well, at least it wasn't a crime in, in this country. Nothing he posted was illegal. It maybe didn't make some people happy, but that is not a crime in this country. And what a scary precedent to to be held without trial uh, simply because they, they don't like the things he was saying with his uh, social media platforms. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I, I said this to someone earlier today. Oh, this is a big one. <laughs> I, I respect Pat. I respect Pat a lot in that he had the courage to do something about the injustices that are happening to the citizens of this country where a lot of people don't. And so like him or not, like the way he does it, like the way he says it, I respect that he has the jam to do something about it, that he was willing to travel to Ottawa to rally people, to jockey the trucks, to, you know, uh, just do that part of things. And he he wasn't a main organizer. They'll they'll all tell you that. He says it. He he just knew how to run trucks. And I mean, nobody's nobody's talking about the fact that he was here in 2019. He brought a convoy. They came. They parked on Wellington. They got stuff done and then they left. So like him or don't, I respect what he's, the stand that he's taken and that he was willing to do something about the injustices. Yeah. And you make a great point that, that I've said before too. Many have said uh, he wasn't some kind of primary uh, organizer. He was a great uh, spokesperson and helped to get the word out and helped encourage those who who were more involved in organizing and I mean and I, I saw some people in the comments there too if, if he's locked up uh, we should be locked up I, I should be locked up I, I'm doing exactly I have a different style of course we all have different styles but I'm doing the same thing that he's doing I'm encouraging people to get out I encourage people to get out to to Rolling Thunder I'm encouraging them to get out to James Top I'm supporting these things and I, I'm, I'm speaking out and so um s someone says yeah here um Tara, thank you for the super chat. Uh, I pray for Pat and George. Hyperbole isn't a crime, and I think they have huge hearts and wanted to fight for our rights uh, long before the convoy. I'm concerned that they don't have adequate representation or an advocate on the court. And, and yeah, that idea of like hyperbole, you know, he obviously said things in a different way um, than than I do, and but that is not is certainly by no means uh, a crime. And uh, I agree that, uh, and from hearing your conversations, uh, with him, you telling me about that. Uh, he's got a huge heart, and uh, he cares deeply for this country, for his family. And uh, he wasn't trained as a professional spokesperson. He never pretended to be. He didn't go to to media school. He never was doing this uh, media thing uh, before. And uh, and all of a sudden, you know, because he's speaking from his heart and he's uh, sharing what he feels, and then they're they're attacking him for it, and ultimately letting him rot in prison for over. 100 days and it's absolutely uh deeply deeply disturbing mm -hmm. uh you you had mentioned there had been and i'd heard from, from others too about infections with with his leg because he has an artificial uh leg and he was not getting good treatment for that can you elaborate on that yeah he has a prosthetic leg and uh my brother-in-law actually has a prosthetic leg so i have closely watched what has happened with him and I know the the sores that he gets from like the, the cup that the, the leg goes into in order to click into the prosthetic leg. And it gets irritated and it rubs and it, you know, makes these sores that are very painful. And uh, I mean, blister on the bottom of your foot essentially is what it's like, but wait on that. And so, you know, he's, he's had infections in his leg leg that they they treated he was in medical for a little bit uh, i much more about that but when i do mm -hmm. see him i always ask what he's doing because i know it's a recurring thing it's not something that really goes away it's something that they will always just have to manage because of the nature of the wound so yeah yeah but i wouldn't say yeah it, it... <laughs> what's that i wouldn't say it's stellar medical care 
Yeah, and uh, and and reminder for those uh, some some few people are asking there what what is the charge that he's being held on? There are ten charges. Uh, I don't know them all actually. Obstruction of justice, mischief, um, like intent to commit mischief, intent for an obstruction of justice, I believe. And I mean, if somebody wants to do a quick Google search, you can. Right. But but none of them are violent. Right. I guess that's the yep. point I'm getting and at. There, there's no no accusation or indication that he's a danger to anyone uh, physically. He might be a danger to our prime minister's pride. <laughs> that appears to be the actual crime. But uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but presumably dangerous criminals have come in and out in the last 100 days. As I understand it, you can commit much more violent offenses and not be held for 100 days without bail. Indeed. Uh, so one of the things that is concerning to me, and I have been speaking about this for years, actually, is our broken systems that we must live and work in. Our judicial system, our healthcare system, our welfare system, our CAS, homelessness care, every mental health, every single system that we have currently broken beyond repair, if you ask me. Mm. And so you've got this prison who you're getting a whole mixed bag of people, but I believe every single one of them has got some kind of trauma that is, which has caused them to turn to crime. You know, there's often drug and illegal activity, you know, and what all this stuff. There's, there's trauma there with people, but prison doesn't get to the trauma. They punish the crime. And so if we're never getting to the trauma, how are we rehabilitating people? And so that is in there for mischief, which is a mirror, I believe. I, I am what is happening to his heart while he is there. Known men and a couple of women as well who have gone to prison and, and come out so hard and come out hardened and changed in a very bad way because of what has happened things that they've had to do in prison to survive and the arbitrary treatment of the guards. Some of them might like him and they might, you know, he might get favor for, from them and others really, really love the power that they've got. And that that's everywhere. You've got some police officers yeah. who are really great. They've taken an oath and they meant it. And then you've got a few who are power hungry and they exercise that every chance they get. And that, that is in everything. So, uh, the arbitrary treatment of like what he has received is concerning to me. And there are some guards in there that absolutely force me to keep a mask on my face and others of them, they just don't care. They don't bother with it. It's whatever. And so alone, why are we still wearing masks in the prison? Why, why do I have to wear a mask when I'm literally sitting class on a, a phone? Why do I have to wear a mask for that? Actually, I had COVID a year ago and my lungs and wearing a mask is quite, quite painful for me. If I'm being on, that doesn't seem to matter just because and so you know there's all this arbitrary treatment which i don't like and it's not it's not just it's not just for a guard to be able to treat a prisoner with their feelings because you have a job to, and that's what you should be doing well it's this issue of of, of othering somebody and I, I mean i've already received uh, messages and and well and you've certainly received your fair share of hate and it's it's that uh, these are these are bad people and we're not bad people and these bad people deserve uh, to be punished and uh, and and this kind of talk comes right from the top I mean that's what our prime minister has promoted this kind of thing of these are dangerous people these are bad people and uh, and to him Pat King is enemy number one and even if uh, Pat King had committed uh, some kind of uh, offense 
then there are still rights in this country, right? And that's and I appeal to people who who even don't like the guy, or don't even like this whole movement. Maybe they disagree with all of it, but <laughs> but we have we have rights, and prisoners have rights. You're innocent until proven guilty. Uh, people need to be treated with dignity and respect, whatever uh, crime they may or may not have committed, and especially when they haven't been found guilty of anything. And and that's the really scary thing. And I hope those who you know, there's some trolls in the chats, and I hope they can can see that this this is scary because so maybe maybe you agree with having him uh, locked up but you know one day he, you might slip up and say something that the current government doesn't agree with you might support some cause that becomes uh, not trendy and uh, is something the government doesn't like and uh, and I for one am going to stand up for your right for freedom as well too and for a fair trial and we do need to do that for each other that's what this country is based on that basic principles of human dignity, innocent until proven guilty. And uh, no matter what crime someone has or hasn't committed, they have these basic human rights that need to be respected. And I think it's very clear that Pats are not being respected, and especially for someone who hasn't been found guilty of anything. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Dave. And I mean, I want to just be my that George is in there. I, I don't have access to George. I, I've tried to reach out mm -hmm. to whoever's running his page. I believe it's his daughter. I've tried to reach out to her to, you know, offer whatever I can to George because I, I prayed with him too. I would do a phone visit with him. You know, I, I will, I'll also support George. I just haven't been able to connect with him, but he also, you know, is being, yeah, I just happen to be in a place where I can visit Pat. And so, so I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do whatever yeah is necessary to love the person. Yeah, and it's I, something I've appreciated about you and and your church community from the first time I, I met you is there was there wasn't any questions about the past or or when when I came walking in that uh, that first time after my arrest. It, uh, it didn't matter. I mean, it didn't even matter that it was the convoy. I could have been uh, just getting out of prison for anything. And I know uh, you and your community would have treated me the same way. You would have prepared a meal for me and given me a, a place of uh, comfort and uh, respect. So um, thank you so much for, for what you continue to do. I want to talk a, a little bit about things that, that people can do. And the one thing that I've been really encouraging, uh, starting with the, the video I posted there this earlier today, is, is to write letters of support to Pat because, as you said, his um, it's very difficult uh, mentally for him. They're trying to wear him down mentally, and I'm quite confident that the goal there is to wear him down so he will sign away on the dotted line, um, give away his right to speak up about this, try to push him out of the province as they did uh, to Tamara and Chris Barber. I think they, they want him out of the picture. I think that's very obvious, and they want to silence him. And uh, what are ways that people can support in these letters? The address is in the comments and in the description. Um, but but what are ways that people can uh, support him uh, in these letters that they're writing? Let me first say, Dave, that uh, he beaten down, but he's not quite. Mm. So I don't believe he'll be so easily given to signing anything away. He he's that's good to hear. He's pretty. Yeah, he's uh, committed to this. I appreciate because all the things that he's committed to are things that I am hoping for myself. You know, these kinds of freedoms. So uh, I, I just I just wanted to say that, you know, there has had rough days for sure. Who wouldn't? Prison is no park. It's really not. And uh, but I keep telling him one day at a time you know don't look too far ahead and uh so a way to support him for sure have i, I hadn't even actually thought about a letter I've written him a letter uh, you know i get fun i've used got my kids coloring pencils out <laughs> drawing. i can't draw but i a few little drawings and you know made it colorful and bright and just interesting and mm -hmm. He had to apply to get a Bible, so it's not like, yeah, not like things are just like, like readily available to them. They, there's really not, not much to pass the time. And um, writing 
matters is a really good thing for him. And, you know, it'd be, it's encouraging when, when you are feeling kind of beaten down, somebody saying, you know, well, here's the reasons why I'm thankful for doing it puts, it brings hope, it, it encourages, and it helps them to hang on for, for longer. Well, yeah. People, and yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the and letters, oh, no, letters, writing letters and, and not just to write letters to, to uh, an anonymous person and ask the guards to give them, you know, we could start a whole thing. It could be even bigger. Uh, funny enough, packed their day and said, uh, Hey, there's a guy in my room that would, wants you to visit. Uh, would you? Hmm. And I said, sure, sure. I will. And so I actually have done prison before. This is not really new. So for the people who are outraged that I'm, you know, daring to go visit, yeah, I'll do this all day, every day, same as I'd feed trucker and help people, all the, all the other things that we've done all day long. So write your MPs and, and tell them how you feel about what's going on and make them uncomfortable to sit in silence, make them uncomfortable, keep prodding them, keep being loud about it. And I mean, that Saturday where I felt the Lord tell me it's time to stand up for Pat King for whatever's coming from taking that stand, I'm ready for it. And I'm, I've got skin in the game here. So I, you know, I, I actually had somebody on Facebook really come at me hard for this and told me I do not know who this man is and he is bad. And funny enough, Rob's sermon yesterday, he said, everybody look at your neighbor and tell them you're a bad <laughs> And so we all looked at each other and said, you're a bad person. But the grace of God is what makes me good. And I, I looked in Pat's eyes the other day and said, I am hideous Christ. I am hideous. And so if there's anything good in me, it's because of Jesus. And I might just say no to him to a prison. You know, there's people that knock knock on the door of the church on any who are hungry. They don't have clothes. They don't have food. They need to use the phone. They need to use the bathroom. We don't turn people away for those things. We try and do whatever we can because Proverbs 327, which is my life scripture, which is do not withhold those who deserve it if it was in your power to give. So I just go and spend 20 minutes with Pat hmm. on a, on a yeah. afternoon. Why wouldn't I do that for, you know, actually we've got quite a few people here who are fresh out of prison and they, and they get loved and they get hugged and they get served coffee and they take a seat at the table the same as everybody else. And uh, for those who, uh, my viewers who, who, who pray, um, is there ways that uh, you believe that uh, people could be praying for, for him? Or what are some specific needs that you would suggest for, for those who take part in prayer? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's wonderful. It's not, it's, uh, it's not miraculous. So, you know, this is doing things to, that he might not like. He might not like not being able to be Pat King. Like that has fell to be hard. And I think what people aren't into consideration, you just look at this guy and you're like, well, he's so rough around the edges and he's so bold and brash. And well, have you ever thought of what his childhood was like to make him that way? He was on the oil field and they're on the rigs for 25 years. You think those guys up there have the luxury of being soft and tender <laughs> and letting their feet out and mm, probably not. So there have been things that have happened to him in his life that have made him to be the way he is. And there might be things happening to his heart right now that he doesn't like. And uh, to be honest, I'm coming, coming in there and I'm like, Hey, what do you got in here? Like, let me have a peek. And, <laughs> It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. So, you know, it's uncomfortable whenever we are faced with things about ourselves that are not so pretty and we maybe need to tweak. He gets to just be 
Pat King, and he's leading the multitude. He doesn't have to look at it. Mm. Buddy, you know, when we get a season of rest where there's nothing to do, we got to take inventory and stock. And so pray that he would have the, to take care of those things and that he would come out of, even if he's in there wrongly, unjustly, that use everything for his good, every single thing for his good, that he would be, that he would be healed, that he would be free, that he would have joy because we can, we can have a measure of joy from, from the Lord that is not from this world, substantial. And that's what Pat needs. He needs a joy that be ripped out of him because he doesn't get a visit or he can't, you know, talk to wh whatever the thing is. So pray for favor on him. Pray that the crown evicted of what he is doing is to be, I mean, the, whole, the holy conviction of how he's dragging this out and causing this much longer than it needs to be. And even for his swiftly on things that, that are happening. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot that people can pray for. There's a great, um, and, and you reminded me of it when we were talking before this, the, the story of uh, Joseph. And if you don't know, if people don't know the story of Joseph, there was a man uh, named Joseph who was uh, wrongfully, sold into slavery by his older brothers the historic uh, in the historic jewish text he was um, thrown into a pit and sold into slavery uh, wrongfully by his brothers and uh, he committed no crime and yet he was uh, sent away he ended up uh, being in prison in 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 egypt and then uh, eventually as the story goes he rose to become uh, second in command over the whole uh, nation and uh, was able to uh, save that nation from from famine, and uh, and you shared that story, and I think quite prophetically, and and uh, my hope as well is for Pat, although he's been wrongfully thrown in here, that uh, he may remain strong and even be strengthened by this, and come out and be able to be a great spokesperson for this nation, and uh, and lead this uh, nation out of the the famine, as it were, and uh, I think that was a, a wonderful shot, a thought that you shared. Uh, with me, and I think it's that that story is very appropriate for this time. Mm, imagine Dad could use a man like Pat King to save a name. Mm. It would not just mess with everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's all the it's with the rich and famous and 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 fancy politicians who've gotten us into this mess, and uh, in keeping with the the whole uh, tale of the of the truckers and the freedom convoy. It, it was a uh, very regular people, very normal uh, men and women, rough around the edges. I mean, if you guys all got to see all the conversations that that I ever had uh, behind uh, closed doors, um, you know, not not everyone is uh, is made for um, being in front of the cameras necessarily. Certainly not the cameras that pick apart everything you say and hold it all against you. But but that is the truth of the convoy. They were just very normal. Um, men and women with their normal problems and normal uh, personalities. And uh, it was them who came together to stand up for this country. Ultimately, it wasn't the doctors. It wasn't the, the, the billionaires. It wasn't the politicians. It was a bunch of uh, truckers and uh, regular lay people, regular uh, carpenters and tradesmen and sheet metal workers and uh, and everything in between who came together to stand for, for this country. And uh, I think Pat King, uh, perfectly embodies uh, that with, you know, rough around the edges and and uh, perhaps not uh, the most eloquent in speech. Um, but but he says what's on his heart and he's got a big heart and he loves this nation. And uh, he and played, played, played a huge role in that. And for, for that, he's being um, uh, punished. And so um, I, too, I hope that he can uh, come out stronger than ever and continue to to stand for us. So I encourage you guys to um, uh, send your prayers to him and send those letters of encouragement, encouraging him, thanking him for what he's done, encouraging him to keep uh, standing for freedom and to be a spokesperson and to come out, like I said, even stronger than when he went in there. And then um, other ways that I know that you've been trying to help is is you 
I've actually just recently done an interview uh, with the CBC, an interview with the devil, some would say. <laughs> um, but uh, can you tell us tell us about that on, on how you're trying to speak out uh, for him to other media outlets as well? Well, I, I mean, CBC called and said, could we, could would you talk? <laughs> and mm-hmm. I said, no, I will. And uh, then I asked Rob, I talked to, talk to you, Dave, and decided that I would do it. And that Saturday that, you know, say it's time to stand up. Um, it's time to stand up. It's it's time for me to say, I'm 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 for him. Because hmm. you know we're all holding Pat to the you know the standard of that we've made up. It's a, and so who are we to make this standard that he's got to measure up to? So I'm I'm that's what I you know I I want. I want truth to come out. I want actually. I want people to see the person that I'm seeing, because the media has portrayed him as this white supremacist monster, and he's so not. <laughs> he's so not that. Uh, so I actually have not even watched a bunch of footage about him. I don't really even know all of the things he said, and I I, I kind of have chosen that on purpose because I want to make up my own mind by the man that I'm sitting across and you know one person has said to me well he he'll he'll put his best behavior on uh, for you and I've said he's coming out in an orange jumpsuit with no shoelaces what on earth does he have to impress me with nothing he's got nothing like he's literally been stripped of every single thing and so he just actually gets to really be himself and so that's why you know Dave earlier when I said no comment I didn't get to speak to him today to ask what he wanted and so I'm being very careful and mindful to portray his confidence in the things that he has shared I want to uh, and respect him and honor him and and you know I'm building a existing relationship and I I, I don't want to just air all that he has shared with me. So I, I am protecting him a little. You know, he, he'll he'll share the things that he wants to share in due time. Um, and I, I'm trying to share, you know, from my perspective and what I feel of him. So. Yeah. No, and I appreciate that. And, and thank you so much for your willingness to speak to me. And uh, as I understand um, the article with the, the CBC and, and our fingers cross that uh, they share your words uh, honestly um, but I think it's I hope that even for some of the mainstream outlets it's becoming it gets harder and harder to argue that this makes any sense at uh, 105 days we're at and, and counting uh, that he's still being held without trial and um, and so thank you for continuing to speak out I encourage uh, other streamers who are watching this as well too to continue to share this story out I, I made that shorter video that five minute video appealing for people to to write letters of support and uh, encourage people to share that out and um there's no yeah it's people were i saw in the comments asking about financial support for uh for pat it um i mean the accounts are all frozen and and anything right now but um, do you know of any specific ways of uh, helping with the legal fees or is, is there any official way to do that? There isn't one that I know of, but maybe you know of one. That, that would be very helpful, actually. That is a very tangible can help because his accounts are frozen. Uh, there is a, a an email address on his page, King. There is an email address that can uh, support him with, and that is for these. So, so that's you specifically can imagine, for the legal fees. Yeah, uh, I okay. Okay, I'm I'm not going to say that specific because I don't know that mm-hmm. that that's the case. Right, but me. that's a major need right now. Obviously, it is. It is a major need right now. But he also does still have a mortgage pay in in Alberta, and his bank accounts are full. Like you know, it if you feel led to give and you no, know, let him decide what he's going to do with it, how he needs 
Uh, he's not going out for steak dinners and spending on foolish things. So, you know, if you give, give freely and let him decide how he needs to use it. So go to the real Pat King and there's, uh, there, there's, a, an email address there that are giving email money transfers. And that's on his Facebook. Yeah. The, the real Pat King. Yeah. And so that's another way you guys can support. Yeah. If you go to the real Pat King, the real Pat King on Facebook, facebook.com slash the real Pat King. And, um, and you can support him there as well. And then I posted the address for the, the letters in the comments and in the, uh, the chat there as well. So people can send their support to him because uh, yeah, again, so important that he comes out stronger than ever and is able to be a strong voice for this movement. And, uh, I know you have a, a full day there. Are there any uh, final comments you'd like to give before you head out? Thank you. Thank you to, like, really to all the people it takes to, you know, we've all got things in our lives that are not, aren't polished. And I'm thankful that all my dirty laundry is not being aired out for everyone to see. Uh, God has applied mm. grace and mercy to my life for many things over my lifetime, over 47 years. And I, I wake up with the same need for God's grace every morning that Pat King does. So I'm not, I'm not throwing any stones over here. Um, and I, I want to be part of the, the people that are building up, not tearing down. And so uh, that, that's really what we're going to continue to do. Me, you know, what we do at the church that I'm, I'm with. Uh, we are four people. We're for God's measuring stick the thing that we measure our lives to. And so I'm having this beautiful opportunity to minister to Pat King. Like I'll tell you, a year ago, one of my girlfriends from New York State, she she sent me a video of Pat. I, I don't even actually know what it's about, but he got some some case was thrown out of court because they couldn't isolate uh, the virus. And so he, I think he had been charged with something that's terrible that I don't even know, but that really shows you that I've not done a bunch of research on him. And she sent me the video and she said, Hey, do you know this guy? And uh, I, I said, no, I, I've, I've heard of him and I, I think he's doing good things, you know, but, but that was about it. If you would have told me a year ago that I'd be visiting this guy in prison, that I'd be his only friend, I'd tell you to shut up, mm -hmm. that you do not know what you're talking about. That's impossible. And here we are. And so, you know what? It's actually a highlight of my week when I get to go to the jail and visit with him. It's a highlight of my week. I left with a heavy heart on, on Saturday when I visited because watching the brokenness that has come, it's a hard thing. So be kind. Be kind to one another. You just don't know what people are, are facing. And we've got we've to have a measure of grace and mercy, the same one. You know, the golden rule, treat treat others how you want to be treated. That's what we all need to start living by. It's what our prime minister needs to start doing. Treat Canadians how he would like to be treated. Kind of the bottom line, pray for that. Pray for Justin Trudeau. Oof, those hard, hard words even coming out of my mouth. Justice, his name means justice. He begins to live up to his namesake. And he, he can do some. We need a miracle day. We need a miracle from God Almighty. Well, we've had uh, more than our fair share of, uh, of miracles since uh, the convoy. And every day when I was in, in Ottawa, it, uh, it was kind of surreal how there were needs and they were met uh, sometimes almost instantaneously. And so, um, yeah, I, I know I've heard, it, I've heard it described by many different ways from people of different uh, belief systems, but powerful things have been moving here and I believe they will continue to move. And uh, I'm sure it's not coincidence that, uh, that you were able to connect with him there very early on. And now um, a wonderful soul like yourself is, is able to be there to support him and care for him emotionally and spiritually. And so thank you so much for doing that for him. And uh, I'll, I'll let you go here and thank you for sharing with us. And I know you'll, you'll keep me, up to date there and um and as you 
as you learn more and are able to continue to care for him. And if there's anything that, that he'd like to communicate through you, then uh, by all means, reach out to me and, and let me know. So uh, thank you very much, um, Melissa, for your time. Thank you. Dave, thank you for me to, this is a big one. <laughs> and for us to like mm -hmm. say, we're, we're, we're talking, it's a big one. So thank you for being willing to get in the trenches and uh, talk about the hearts. It's good. Of course. Excited. And I'm Take care, excited. Melissa. We'll see you again soon. Yeah. Oh, bye, Dave. <laughs> Were you bye. trying to say something before? No, it's good. I'm done. Okay. Done. Sounds good. Okay, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Yeah, and yeah, uh, thank you again to uh, Melissa there. I know she, she said she had a a full day, uh, basically every hour scheduled away there. So I wanted to make sure she was on her way there for four o'clock. And, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for, for her, um, giving us that update. Uh, again, that's Melissa from the bikers church. Uh, she's been able to, after a much difficulty, be able to start visiting Pat and, uh, was just updating me on, on where he's at. And, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's hurting, but, but not broken. And he's, he's holding the line there. And we're encouraging people to to send their support and encouragement. He can't get emails or any digital communication like that, but he can receive uh, letters. And so we're encouraging uh, a letter writing campaign. The address is in the video description. It's also in the video that I posted earlier, the shorter video that you can share out. And it's about five minutes and uh, it's on the YouTube and Facebook. Uh, the address is there to the OCDC, Attention Pat King. And you can write letters or send postcards Encourage him to hold the line, encourage him to hold out against the gag order so that he may come out and again be a strong spokesperson for freedom. And uh, yeah, I will also put the address realpatking.com. Realpatking.com is the official website for Pat King. And so if you want to uh, give towards his legal defense, then uh, you can do so at uh, realpatking.com freepat at realpatking.com is the address there that you can help out. So those are two very practical ways. Um, if you can uh, give uh, financially to help with that, then uh, you can do so at that website, realpatking.com. And then um, encouraging people, everyone, if you can afford a stamp, is able to send a letter. And I think that would be a huge, I know that would be a huge encouragement to him right now. Uh, if not, if he has lots of time on his hands, so to be able to flood him with hundreds and, and perhaps thousands of letters that he can read through and be encouraged, it, it's kind of hard to even imagine what that would be like to just be there locked up for days at a time, no communication or minimal communication from the outside world. And I just want to flood him uh, with love and support at this time, uh, knowing that people are still thinking uh, about him and care for him. And, uh, and want to see him free. It's, it's absolutely terrible that, uh, that he's still dealing with this. It's mind boggling that he's still locked up after 105 days for nonviolent offenses. And uh, we thank you so much, Melissa, for taking the time to, to reach out and connect with him. Uh, I know <laughs> Melissa would, would never ask uh, for this, but I do want to highlight uh, her church. It's been such a huge part of this movement. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Vanier Bikers Church, bikerschurch.com. Uh, another way you can support this movement is um, supporting the Vanier Bikers Church. Um, they have a donate link right there on their website as well. And uh, that's another way that you can uh, support the work that uh, her church is doing. They've been such a big part of this from the beginning, from one of the very first organizations when, when I showed up and, and didn't know who who, uh, who uh, adopt a trucker or hug a trucker, or any of these groups, never heard any of these names. I just showed up in Ottawa and one of the first people to uh, say hi to me was a member of their community from the Bikers Church and said, if you're ever hungry and need something to eat or warm up, then come to our church. And it ended up the first time I was there wasn't until the day I was arrested. Someone from their church picked me up in the parking lot uh, after the police dumped me outside the city. And uh, a member of their church drove me to their church and gave me a warm meal and um, just gave me the emotional support I needed uh, after that day of my arrest. 
And so wonderful to see Melissa and that community continuing to care for everyone, uh, for the truckers, for the bikers, and for certainly for those who were arrested and and for Pat King, who still is in prison. So that's another wonderful organization that I can fully get behind supporting. And uh, you can support uh, Melissa and her church directly there at uh, at their website. So I encourage you guys to do that as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I encourage you guys to share that shorter video, especially that I did. And we want that to really get out there to go viral, encouraging people to send letters of support to, to Pat King. We want to raise awareness that he's still locked up. Many people do not even know that. I've seen many messages of they were surprised to hear he was still locked up. I'm glad I've been able to get direct contact there now, and uh, and I'll try to keep you informed as that progresses. And uh, I want to remind you again, too, June 30th, uh, James Top is uh, coming to Ottawa. Uh, for viewers who are on here for the first time, I encourage you guys to subscribe to Live from the Shed, and I'll be bringing you uh, coverage of that live when James Top arrives in Ottawa. He's expected to arrive June 30th. He's been a member of the Armed Forces for 28 years and is on his way to Ottawa. He's been hiking, uh, marching across the country uh, since back in February, and he's in northern Ontario now, and he will be reaching Ottawa by June 30th, and I'll be bringing live coverage of that and um, those who are supporting him and uh, protesting the mandates, the mandates that are causing him to uh, be removed from the military. And so if you're new to the channel, yeah, I would love for you guys to subscribe and I will continue to give you updates on that. Tomorrow night, I will be having on the author of How the Prime Minister Stole Freedom, a new number one bestseller on Amazon. It's a little cartoon uh, book in the style of Dr. Seuss called How the Prime Minister Stole Freedom. You can look it up on Amazon right now if you're interested or uh, wait. And tomorrow night, I'll be having the author on to tell us all about his new book. Uh, it's a great little read. He sent me a copy and uh, it's um, it's good fun. It's It approaches this whole thing in a little more lighthearted way in a book you could actually read with your kids called How the Prime Minister Stole Freedom. And he was able to hit uh, number one on Amazon with some help from Clyde Do Something in his community. And so shout out to Clyde Do Something in for supporting this book. And uh, I'm looking forward to supporting it tomorrow as well and hearing from the author of that book. Um, so tune in tomorrow night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and I'll be having the author on then. Yeah, so thanks, you guys, uh, for tuning in today. Again, I'll continue to bring you updates about uh, Pat as I hear from them and uh, hear from Melissa and continue to encourage you guys to, to pray for Pat and to write him letters and support him. Uh, whatever your personal feelings are about him on, on things he's said in the past. Uh, he's a Canadian through and through, a proud Canadian who has uh, been working hard to fight these tyrannical uh, policies and this tyrannical government for quite some time, long before uh, I ever showed up in Ottawa and uh, long before I was ever doing any of this thing. And he's among uh, many that we have to thank for setting the whole uh, landscape for this freedom movement and certainly for the trucker convoy and for bringing attention to that. And so we all owe him a debt of gratitude for that. And uh, I want to continue to support him. And if people have direct contact through George, I'm going to continue to to work on that. And if I can get um, more information on that, I will for sure let you guys know. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. And, uh, and make sure to write those letters to Pat. The address is in the video description and pinned to the comments there as well. Um, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Keep hauling.